court on this or do you need me to? Bob Beeler, voice of the Broncos. I'm going to let you fire away first, and then we're going to go with Ron and BJ. Tim, first of all, welcome to Boise. Thank you. Excited to be here. Well, I've got kind of one question that kind of encompasses a couple of things here, and then I have a second one. Uh, the first one is uh, you're just your thoughts on joining Boise State, and what kind of an advantage do you think it is for you coming in as, an, as a line coach with an offensive coordinator that you know? Um, well, as, as you guys know, Boise State is a special, special place, and it's full of just uh, elite, elite people. And I couldn't just be more excited to be around the program. And, and when you look at Boise State, I always think of like they have attracted great people. But this place has found a way to make everyone that's involved with it great and even better. So it has this unique blend of getting great people here, but then also continuing to develop them into being even better when they leave. And that's included coaches and all the coaches that have kind of come to the program and the players. So uh, I couldn't be more and more excited to be here and around good people and knowing that we're going to develop the players that we get. And then I'm also going to develop as a coach. Um, and then with me and Coach Paul obviously have a good relationship and uh, you know, we speak this. football in general there's so many ways to do it and um i'm a big believer like i i don't know if i do it the best way but it's going to be consistent and i'm always going to push right and have this constant push towards getting the guys to do it the way the bronco way the way we want them to do it and uh you know m my big belief is let the guys play and have a lot of fun do it. let's not bog them down with a bunch of uh, let's just let those guys again like we said there's been a lot that come to this program so we know there's going to be good players how do we just kind of unlock those guys and let them have a ton of fun and be physical and set the tempo for the entire team and the entire offense and kind of lead lead the way uh, out in front thanks coach appreciate it so coach uh, you mentioned your relationship with uh tim uh he talked to us a lot about his hashtag half of 50, how he didn't even look at the scoreboard until he had 50 points on, on the board. Uh, how, how would you describe his approach to football and how does that mesh with yours? Uh, it's all about attacking. Like we don't get too what defense is doing and trying to read coverages and trying to react to what the defense is doing. Cause it's at the end of the day, if we execute an offense, no one can stop us. No one can stop us. Regardless of who we're playing, they, we cannot be stopped if we execute so it's just getting the guys and, and everyone to buy in that if we focus on ourselves and we play and execute the way it's supposed to be done, we're, we're going to be an uh, unstoppable force. And you played at UC Davis, so you had three separate coaching stints there. What, was it difficult to leave your alma mater or, or was this job just a no brainer? Uh, I mean, it's, it's always hard to leave a place where you, you played at and coached at and have so many roots. And I've been on and off UC Davis for 14 years. So, that's a special, special place. Uh, that's where we met my wife, and that's where my kids were born. So um, Davis is obviously a special place, but Boise State is a no-brainer. I mean, the history and the foundation that's here and the resources, the type of players that we can we can get here. It's, it's, and Coach Avalos' vision for the program. I mean, just talking to him for a couple minutes, like the hair on the back of your neck starts to stand up because he's he's got this white-hot vision and, and is uh, – going to be able to get everyone on the same page and pull in the same direction and be really, really powerful. I don't know how much of a chance you've had to meet any of your, your players yet, but uh, what are your thoughts on what you have to work with here? I mean, we assume that you have Stets and uh, Uzo coming back on the right side. We know Juku's coming back at left tackles. What are your thoughts on what you have to work with? To be honest with you, I have watched very, very little film on the former guys. So this whole week has been just trying to develop a relationship and get to know the guys and kind of figure out background and have them get a feel for me and then once that's established then I'll kind of start to watch some film and kind of make some evaluation of movement skills and and uh, some footwork and but the big thing here is just like develop that relationship and then once we develop that relationship we'll be able to kind of push the guys and, and help them become the best versions of themselves thank you 
Hey, Tim, this is uh, BJ Rains with Idaho Press. Uh, do you know any of your seniors? That Do you know if any of the guys, like you mentioned, or have decided for sure to come back next year in terms of that extra year of eligibility? This this COVID thing has made everything really, really uh, difficult and fluid. So, I mean, that's that's luckily not my uh, my responsibility. Coach Avalos, he has to deal with all that and figuring out the roster and managing it. So, I I, I do not know. What, what uh, obviously, a unique uh, experience being at College of Idaho, you know, right down the road in Caldwell for a couple of years, uh, with Coach Morosky and, and obviously Tim was there too. But what I don't know if you ever came over to you know watch practice or clinics or anything. Did you have any while you were here in Caldwell? Did you have any you know I don't know if you ever came to a game on a bye week or anything. But did you ever have any uh, interactions or experience with with uh, Boise State's program during that time you were in Caldwell? Yeah. So the first year I was at College Idaho, we didn't have football, so we were just kind of building the team and practicing. So we had a ton, a ton of opportunity to come over here and just observe and watch. So. It was unique because I got to like be living in Boise and see from an outside perspective just what makes Boise State special. And so that was really a, it was really awesome experience because I got to meet a bunch of former players and see their relationships with each other and how they interact in the community and just how much they love Boise State and the Treasure Valley and you know my my uh, small world, but my wife. She lives, her best friend lives in Boise and married a, a former Bronco football player. So we got to meet a bunch of those guys and just see their, how strong their relationships are with each other and for the Treasure Valley and, and Boise State. So it was, a, it was a good experience kind of from an outside perspective to kind of see just the inner workings of Boise State and what makes it so special. And the way it comes kind of full circle and not, you know, you're there as a, a young coach and just kind of observing and everything. And then now here you are back as one of the, the full-time coaches of Boise State. How crazy I guess and you look at the path that has come back to this point yeah I, I just shaved so I probably look a little bit younger than I normally do normally I have this gray beard I got twin girls at home that have really really turned it gray real quickly but um it is just a it's a crazy crazy profession and the Davis tree and the Boise State tree are so interconnected and intertwined and um the values kind of align and, and are so similar that it makes it a pretty easy transition for me to come to Davis to Boise State just because the belief and kind of the foundation is, is very, very similar. Thanks, man. Look forward to working with you. Welcome to town. Thanks. We'll go Jay and then Will. How's it going, Tim? Good. Thanks, Jay. Uh, my, I, I got the picture of you with your gray beard and your bucket hat on. My, my dog was just growling at you. I don't, <laughs> exactly. I don't know why. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, welcome back, though. Uh, Tim, a few years ago, I guess it was more than that, you decided to follow Mike Morosky to the College of Idaho and, and try to build something special there. He said that your, the carrot at the time was being his offensive coordinator and calling plays. How crucial was that commitment from you in order for you to be where you're at today? I mean, Coach Mo has done a lot for just my development as a coach and a father and a husband he's such a great role model and great example and if anyone has spent five minutes with him just know how special of a person he is and um, it was a really good learning experience for me to be able to kind of transition from just an offensive line coach to the coordinator and kind of see how all the pieces fit together and be able to, be able to call a call a game and um, so it was it was instrumental just kind of my growth and development and then like you said it's just a small world and small profession to be able, I never thought, like, I didn't take that job thinking that it would lead to coming back to Boise State. Like, it was just the best for me at the time with a great with a great head coach that I really believed in and cared for. So now, six years later, I'm, I'm here, and, and, and it's just so uh, surreal and special to be back in the Treasure Valley because, as you guys know, Treasure Valley is an awesome place. And just driving around, you see all the different license plates from Arkansas and Colorado. So... I'd like to say Treasure Valley is kind of like this little hidden gem, but it's not like the whole, the words out and like how awesome Treasure Valley is and people are moving from all over here. Uh, so it's, it's really excited to be able to be back and get my family back out uh, when they come. Um, when it comes to, uh, sorry, just a quick second. Uh, when it comes to, um, you know, your, your time there, we were joking around with Kyrie the other day. He said that, you know, when you're kind of at that, at that level, um, you learn to do everything. And, and sometimes that includes, you know, the, the laundry for that matter. So uh, I, I also understand that the UC Davis way is, is starting from the ground up and, and kind of earning your stripes, if you will. 
I just how, 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 how well connected do you feel with every layer of it? How prepared do you feel for this moment to to make this step in your career? I feel very prepared. And, and, and Coach Avlos, about just the mentality that our guys are going to have here are humble and hungry. And I couldn't think of something like describe it more. It's just a really humble guy, but I'm also extremely, extremely hungry. Um, so that's that's the kind of mentality that I bring. That's the mentality that I'm going to install in the offensive line room. And that mentality is going to lead to our guys' behaviors, and those behaviors is going to lead to our culture. So um, it kind of it, it aligns with Coach Avalos's uh, vision for the program is just having having that humble, humble mentality. Um, two more, Tim, and that's um, Tim. We know that you obviously have a, a previous relationship with Tim Plow, the new offensive coordinator here. But how connected? Are you guys truly? You played together. You've coached together. From my understanding, you, you guys are great friends. Your, your wives are, are great friends. Like, how connected are you guys, and, and how much is that going to help you? Uh, we're, we're extremely connected. I know, I, like, I'm sure as soon as I was able, if Coach Avalos was able to give me an opportunity, I'm sure our wives were texting each other probably non nonstop back and forth. But uh, And we played together, and I was the center, and Coach Plow was the quarterback, so that's a very unique relationship that requires a lot of communication and uh, being able to see football through the same lens, which sometimes it's hard to do for an offense alignment and a quarterback. But um, we, have, we have a great connection. I think that also kind of leads just into how both of us were brought up in football. Football is extremely, extremely important, and the end goal is to win games, but that's not the only thing. That's, not, that's like all that football is about. So we kind of developed and uh, kind of raised our kids together and try to be great fathers and great husbands. And that's kind of like how we were raised and brought up. So it just makes for this natural intertwining of, of being able to have football, but then also this personal connection, which is special. I think that's a lot what Coach Avalos is going to do here in the Boise State way. There's this, this great connection with the players and the coaches, and the community. And that's I'm a big believer in that is as important as it is to win football games and to score 50 points on offense like that's not the only thing we're going to have great players here that are going to be great in the classroom and great in the community and coach always always talks about how, how are you going to positively impact the program so our guys walk into the building they can't just be here they can't just be present they got to have the mindset of how am I going to positively impact the program and that carries over when they're on the in the in the classroom and they should be thinking how am I positively impacting Boise State as a whole right now and when they're in the community, they should be thinking, how am I positively impacting the Treasure Valley? And, and those are the guys, we, they want that. So they don't want to just be football guys. They want to know we care about them and are trying to develop them as people. And um, it's, it's, again, like just the Boise State and, and my philosophy and Coach Avalos' philosophy just completely line up and um, couldn't be more happy to be here under and at this place. And it, it's really, really exciting. Um, speaking of your playing days, uh, sometime in the last week, I, I stumbled upon some old video from the 2005 UC Davis Stanford game. Um, I know that uh, Plow was on the roster. I don't believe you played in the game, but you were the starting center in that game. What do you remember about that night? And I also heard that you might have missed a block on the first play of the game that that led to an, that led to a touchdown. So that's, that's funny because whenever you like talk about UC Davis, that game always comes up, and that was like. There's always a highlight. There was a couple. It wasn't only a block. I gave a, I had a holding penalty in the end zone. So it was a safety. Snapped the ball when the quarterback wasn't ready. It was a fumble. So it was like a terrible game. So whenever anyone thinks about that, they're always like, yeah, UC Davis beat Stanford. And that's like the first thing I think about is just all of the mistakes I made that game. And that's part about being, I think, a football coach is, um, those are the things you think about. You think about all the stuff that you can work on and get better. And you don't necessarily think about like the end result was, like, hey, man, we won the game, which was a big deal. But I think about it, giving up a sack and and uh, having a penalty and snapping the ball in between my legs. So it's not definitely was not my my best game by by any means. I heard he has only gave up two sacks that night. Nah, yeah, that both, actually, both on me. Both on me. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tim. I appreciate it. Will Hall. Hey, Tim. Congratulations. Welcome back here to the Treasure Valley. Uh, as a player, as a coach, as a father, as a husband, what kind of impact has Mike Morosky made on your life? Uh, huge. I mean, just playing for him and going over to his house and having barbecues over there and just seeing how he interacts with his family and um, and being able to work with him at UC Davis and also at College of Idaho. He's just 
he's been so instrumental in my development as a football coach. And again, as a husband and a father, and I can't say enough great things about him and um, just how he lives his life. And, and it's, that's kind of what I want to do. My players, like it's so easy and it is to like demand the players to do something, but then we don't live that way. You know, so then coach office has talked about like, Hey, our player, the locker room is going to be clean. Like we're going to make sure that thing is clean. But then that means the coach's locker room has to be clean too. Like we can't tell the players like, Hey, make sure your locker room's clean and then have our locker room a mess. So it's kind of knowing the way, showing the way, going the way. And, um, he, he's a great example of just kind of living everything you preach. What kind of qualities and characteristics make up a good offensive lineman? Oh, I think that's a little bit different wherever you go. You know, what, what worked at UC Davis isn't going to necessarily work at Boise State and, and like just the football team in general, like should represent the community. You know, so, so at Davis, those guys represented UC Davis and Sacramento in that area. And here we want the guys to represent uh, – the Treasure Valley and Boise and Idaho. So, um, and and there's been such a good foundation here. You know, you don't need to mess with it. And those guys know, like, they want to be blue collar. They want to be tough. They want to run the football. So it's it's already in place. It's kind of my goal, I think, as an online coach. It's not so much to come in here and break it all down and try to build it up in my vision. It's kind of be here, observe what's worked, and then like take the screwdriver and just turn it another turn. You know, another little half turn just to unlock a little bit that last little 10%. If we can find a way to do that, if I can find a way to get this 10% more out of that offensive line group, it's going to be one of the best in the business. Thanks, Tim. Congrats. Thank you. Ron, you got a quick follow-up? I do, yeah. Tim, I, I, you, you carried the uh, run game coordinator title the last couple of years at UC Davis. Do you expect to carry that at Boise as well? Uh, I don't know. So this college football is so funny with all the titles they you know can give people. So – Again, I just want to be the best offensive line coach I can be. And again, so excited to be here and for Coach Avalos giving me the opportunity and being able to carry out his vision. So, um, you know, whatever whatever titles work themselves out, that's that's kind of Coach Avalos. But I'm just I just want my goal is to be the best offensive line coach possible. You mentioned wanting to run the ball. This is a program that, that produced a thousand yard rusher eleven years in a row. Uh, obviously, they they didn't do that last year in seven games. Do you kind of you feel any pressure to kind of really come in and, and get this running game going right off the bat? Well, hold on. There's going to be an asterisk on that, Ron. So we'll have that conversation later. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course there will uh, be. Of course there will be. Pressure is a good thing. Like, I, I, no one has a higher standard for myself and the O line room than me. Like, I have a higher standard than anyone. So if those guys aren't producing, I'm the first one that's going to know about it. And that's what I want to instill the offense lineman too. Like, I shouldn't have a higher standard. For, for Stets than Stets does. Like, he's got to have a higher stand than I do. And if we can just do that, the the thousand yard rusher, it'll just take care of itself. It'll just work it out. So it's about establishing a standard of conducting your business and practicing and preparing in the off season and, and running decks. Like, if we do that, then the thousand yard rushers will come. So let's, let's set a high standard and go work and achieve that standard. And then at the end of the year, we'll see, you know, how many, how many rushing yards we had. Thank you. Tim, I had one more quick one. You, you kind of touched on it earlier, but just like what a, what a offense looks, what's the offense going to look like? What it looked like previously at UC Davis, like for fans or media that didn't, you know, watch much of UC Davis and what you guys are going to try to implement here at Boise State. Like what's the, you know, you use the words like up-tempo, explosive, you know, what, what's kind of the, how, how do you, would you describe what the offense is going to look like? Uh, I, I don't know. We're, we're still kind of working through that. And that's, that's a thing that when, Coach Plow came to UC Davis. He just doesn't like bring his offense. He says, okay, like this is all the pieces that are here. This is kind of the personality. Let's kind of build around what's here. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing. We're trying to identify the players and what's here and what they do good. And there, there, there's no reason for us to say like, hey, you got to do what we want to do if, if it's not going to let you be successful. So it's kind of figuring out how do we best put the players in a position to be successful. If we can do that. You know, maybe maybe it's, you know, this formation, this motion, this shift or this trick play. Like we all, there's a lot of great football coaches here, Coach Riddle and Coach Miller that are carried over and they've been in the program and know. So it's kind of working with them and kind of blending what uh, what Coach Plow's done in the past and what what pieces are here to, to make a really fun, explosive offense. Can I throw another one at him, Joe? Absolutely. Okay. Um, Tim, in talking with 
Coach Morosky, he said that you're one of the more patient people on the face of the earth. Where does that patience come from, and, and would you agree with that assessment? I think it comes from a seven-year-old and twin girls that are four, so with three kids under three. So I think that uh, led to patience and gray facial hair. Um, I don't know. I, I just believe, like, if if you just work and work and keep working and keep pushing in, a, in the same direction and don't get deterred if there's a little bump in the road, it'll it'll work itself out. And that's, again, just trying to – instill that in the guys like, hey, we just got to keep working extremely hard and keep pushing the same direction and that sustained uh, drive in a consistent direction will lead to positive results. Um, and then one more, I know that you kind of touched on characters and personality that you want to kind of have in your offensive linemen, but that that's such a unique group. You know, it's there's something about the, the fraternity of being an offensive lineman. How do you win them over? How do you uh, get them on the same page as you right away and start creating that bond. Well, there, there's the guys here, the offensive line, just meeting them for the this previous past week and trying to get to know them a little bit better. They are passionate about Boise State and they're passionate about being a Bronco and they're passionate about uh, doing it the Bronco way. So it's more just being consistent with them and allowing them and giving them the tools. And if I can show them like, hey, here's a couple of things that'll help you out, make you successful, they'll, they'll buy in right away. Cause there's great, great kids here and great people, great, not kids, they're young men, great young men in the program that um, th they'll run through a wall for, for Boise State. So, so it's just kind of showing them like, hey, this is, this is what we're gonna do to help you guys be successful. This is what we're gonna do to allow you guys to play fast and free and, and th they'll, they'll buy in right away and, and uh, Kind of execute whatever whatever we decide to throw at them. Thanks again, Tim. Thank you. Is, is, it, is it is it three? I, I forget. I know I can read this in the press release, but is it three girls or is it is it a boy and two girls? I have a Timmy. Our son's seven. Okay. And okay. I have two girls that are four. Okay. Well, cool. That that's awesome. Great place to raise a family, as you know. Yeah, Timmy's excited to go to the river, go fishing, and run across the blue. He keeps asking when he can run across the blue. And then I saw a little uh, – the girls last night were asking if they can start ballet class or dance class around here. So it's tough. And in Sacramento, everything's shut down because of COVID. So um, they're Jews to get here and get going and kind of get back to a little bit of a normal lifestyle. That's awesome. Right, can I sneak one more in, actually? Depends on what it is, Ron. Uh, it's a great one, anyway. <laughs> uh, take, taking that center quarterback dynamic to the coaching staff is really interesting to me. Uh, thinking back on your playing career with Tim, you know, is, is there a moment that always stands out to you? Maybe something in practice, a, a performance in a game, anything like that? Uh, no, I think a big thing is just in the preparation. Like those guys have to prepare together. And I think that was a good thing that seeing Tim and being able to like, I, I know how he prepared and I was there when we were preparing together. So we kind of both uh, know what that takes and what that looks like, what that feels like. And that's a big, big thing for us is to get our quarterback and our center speaking the same language and seeing the game the same way and spending a lot of time together just so they, they're able to efficiently communicate during the game and, and make adjustments and changes to schemes if we need to. Thank you. Guys, good. I appreciate, all, appreciate you all taking some time on Saturday. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. I'll try not to have any more press releases for you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Tim. Tim.